Kembo, Kembo, Natata, in Zambi, Amazulu. It's in the mm. name of our king, Yisaya Pongo. Mm. Mm. Welcome mm. back to my channel, family. My name is Sarah Singer, and here on my channel, we talk about plant-based wellness and biblical spirituality. And I am here with my brother, Micaiah. Away, Musiemi Betuabo. Nice to see you to speak with you guys again. And the notorious Nabi, <laughs> Yanatan. So the notorious. The notorious. <laughs> You're international. The notorious. So, the notorious. If you don't, oh my know, goodness. I know. The notorious. <laughs> the the man who's causing trouble in America. Yes. <laughs> the controversial man. <laughs> We're excited to be back with you guys and yeah. just drop, drop wisdom, drop understanding and um, questions, concerns, and conversations. Ultimately, my channel and the vision is to uh, edify your walk with the Most High. And that yes. is the purpose of this conversation. And so without further ado, family, let's get into it. Tatanzambi. Ya mazulu, ya abe, ya abne, nyambi, the power of the Bantu. Amen. We are proud of our heritage. No matter what any man says, no matter what any assembly says, no matter what the Pope says, we know who we are and are, un are unapologetic. We surrender this time in your hands. May you be glorified in the name of Isaiah Congo in Yeta. Let me just say something. I, I honor you too, because you guys are not religious. Mm -hmm. I, yo, I hate religion. Even when I was under Christianity, though I couldn't define, you couldn't fit me in a church or in a doctrine. I just hated religion. Mm -hmm. And I hate the Hebrew Israelite religion with a passion. It's the Hebrew Israelite religion is worse than Christianity. <laughs> Quote me on that. The Hebrew Israelite religion is worse than Christianity. Wow. Today we're going to destroy the Hebrew Israelite religion once more. And those demons are going to react again. <laughs> Another shame. Okay. Another shame. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm a controversial person. I, uh, unapologetic. Weren't all the prophets this, controversial? Every single one of them? Well, one of them married a prostitute. Oh, Tatan Zambi, please. I will never do that. Please. <laughs> don't, 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 don't allow me to do that. Please. No. They are, that will destroy me fully, you know? Anyway. You guys ready? Ready. Indeed. Okay. What I've seen is this. Whether we are, you are a Christian or now you're awakened as a Habiru or Kabiru or Hebrew, okay? In Christianity, they will say, oh, it's all about being saved. Jesus will save you. Jesus, re receive Jesus and you'll be saved. Receive Jesus. They put fear in you not to go to hell. But they don't teach you that black people are already living hell on earth. Go to Congo, the east of Congo, and tell them about uh, the Great Tribulation. They'll tell you, hey, my friend, we are living tribulation now. What are you talking about? Go to America, Brazil. Tell them, uh, tell them um, about the Great Tribulation. Your ancestors were, were, were in tribulation since you, you left the kingdom of Congo and the other Bantu areas, and you're dying on ships, and you're enchained, you were... They, they killed your ancestors by crocodiles and babies. Man, that's tribulation. Which, which other tribulation are you guys talking about? So we have, to, we have to be very careful how we interpret scripture. There is going to be a great tribulation. We know that. But black people have been going under tribulation for centuries. So be very careful how, what you share with people. I go to the ghetto and, and, and I preach to black people, Jesus loves you. <laughs> I'm on welfare. I'm sick. I'm defeated. You're going to tell me that Jesus loves me. 
so I have, to, I have to suffer on earth and then go to heaven one day. That's the gospel that they, they preach. It's a lie. Christ never preached that gospel. Mm -mm. Read the Bible carefully. What did he say? The kingdom is within you. <laughs> he said, seek first the kingdom to some. But deeper, he says, the kingdom is within you. So there are levels of understanding. The Hebrew Israelites will tell you, you're a Hebrew, you're a Hebrew. Okay, fine, I'm a Hebrew. What next? Is, is that all there is? Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. Is that all there is? There is more. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. There is more. There is more and there is more. Yes. Do we deny the hell message or do, or do we uh, minimize your identity? No. We're just saying that those things are grade one. If Jesus came and wanted me to go to heaven, why didn't I die when I received him? Why am I still alive? To receive him to continue to suffer. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I hate Christianity. I hate, oh, I hate Christianity. You have no idea. Religion. Oh, man. The most high doesn't have a religion. Yesaya doesn't have a religion. Okay? Let us start. Hebrews. If I offend you, it's good. It's good. You must be offended. Yo, I'm Hebrew. I'm Hebrew. I'm Hebrew. Okay, what next? Mm -hmm. Goodness me. We are tired of that. What next? Okay, you're Hebrew. Okay, fine. What next? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 5. From verse 12 to verse 14. Then we're going to skip. We're going to read uh, chapter 6 from verse... Okay, um, I'll guide you. All right, Hebrews chapter 5. From verse 12. Okay. Read verse 12. We, we're going to go verse by verse. Okay. Break down every verse. Hmm. And we're going to discuss it as we, as we always do. I know Sister Sarah has many prophetic revelations for us. So does Brother Micaiah. Let's go. The topic says spiritual immaturity what it's titled that's interesting hallelujah okay. spiritual immaturity <laughs> for though by the this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of yah and you have come to need milk and not solid food stop for by this time you ought to be teachers how long have we been in church my brothers and sisters <laughs> We've heard all the messages and messages. How long have you been in this Hebrew truth? Even if you've been one week, you've heard all the messages. Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28. Everyone is, is teaching that. But is that what the Spirit is saying now? That's why we need prophets. Prophets don't preach what was preached. Prophets preach what, is the, what the Spirit is saying now. And what is the Spirit saying now? By this time, you ought to be teachers mm. with all this knowledge that we have. All of us can teach. Deuteronomy 28. Oh, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. For the Bible tells me so. <laughs> oh, man. My goodness. I hate the church, man. I didn't hate the most high. I hate the church, the system. It's like, is, is this all there is? And now I'm hating this Hebrew Israelite movement. Is this all there is? By this time, you ought to be teachers. You ought to be. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of Yah. So in other words, he's, he's crying. After all this knowledge, you guys must be teachers. So we, we must teach you the first elements again. Why? Immaturity. If we're still fighting about what the name is, immaturity. We're still fighting about whether the, the J, the S, immaturity. Even though I defend the name Zambia Abi, do I force it on people? No. You are free to call any name you feel led to. I'm your brother. I'm, I will pray with you. You can pray in Yahweh Shai's name. I will pray with you. You can pray in the name of Yahusha. I will pray with you. But if I come in the name of Zambi, you won't pray with me. You're immature. Mm -hmm. You're immature. If you base your understanding on Zambia on Wikipedia, you're immature. 
Since we were in high school, they taught us Wikipedia is not even a reliable source. Even people who don't pray know that Wikipedia ain't a reliable source. You, you, you're immature. And you're a leader of a church or an assembly relying on Wikipedia. Immaturity. You need to go back to grade one. That's the problem. That's what the, the Spirit is saying. Right? Mm -hmm. And it says, you need to come to milk and not solid food. The Most High wants to give us solid food in this, in, in, in this day and age. But how can he give us solid food when we're immature? Do you give meat to a baby? No. What, what, what do you give a baby? Milk. But if, if you're 12 years old, uh, forgive my, my expression, you're still sucking on your hmm. on breasts. Right? You, you're not growing well. By 12 years old, you should be eating meat. Sorry, I know Sister Sarah is, is a vegetarian, but I'm just saying, you should be eating meat, solid food. There are many mysteries the multi wants to give us, but he cannot give us. Why? We're immature. So he's saying, guys, I have got so many mysteries, so many things I want to give you, but you are immature. You cannot handle it. You can't handle it. That's my introduction. I right, go. What do you understand? Um, when you're talking about meat, one thing that I have a major problem with is you have people who are in church 10, 20, 30 years, and they're still in the same spiritual place they were when they started. Sad. How do you have pastors preaching a message 10, 20, 30 years? Pastors have made a career at a being, Korea. you know, the disciples had jobs. They had something mm. that they came from. Exactly. You know, and the question then is, well, how is the pastor supported? Well, he's not supported by the assembly. He's not supposed to be supported by the assembly. Mm -hmm. but these teachers who teach a watered down message. Exactly. So that all you hear is, regardless of what you did, Monday through Saturday, you come back to hear the pastor say, oh, Jesus loves you. He's a, for mm. he's a forgiving God. He's a forgiving yeah. God. Exactly. Praise and worship songs, and you go about and you live your your your, your week the way you did before. But there's exactly no, there's no change. How do we have prosperity now? Messages give and it'll come back to you. So you're saying give money and I'll get blessed. Exactly. How's the going to bless unrighteousness. Exactly. How's the Most High going to bless you when you just did everything you wanted to do throughout this week, but then you come and put on a clean suit or a clean dress and you show up? Exactly. Church? Immaturity. But the spiritual. Oh principle is to give and it'll come back to you that's what they teach yeah immaturity and we don't and we didn't see that exactly we have pastors 10 20 30 40 years who still don't know who the chosen people are you are 30 years in the ministry ah no man and they call you the great man of god the man who can break down the bible he knows the hebrew and the greek but you don't know who the people are so look at this. You have pastors, head pastor, 20, 30 years. You got your business, exactly. you got your church staff all in that same position. No mm -hmm. one else is changing mm -hmm. the pulpit. I'm not in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. seats. Mm -hmm. Not a church. That's a corporation. That's a job. It's a job. Corporation. You got your pastor, who's your CEO. You exactly. Who are all your executives? And then you wow. got employees, the people who come every Sunday to give their 10%, hear a message, wow. not going to make them want to not come back. You give them wow. enough to keep them interested or keep them thinking that they're hearing righteousness or hearing from, from the most high, come back and give their 10%. Immaturity. A corporation. Exactly. Then we wonder why we don't see miracles. We wonder why there's no healings and the, the dead are being raised and all these things. And they're faking miracles. Immaturity. I'm, I'm kind of worried since the Sarah is too quiet. It just, um, we were talking about this earlier, actually. And um, wow, you mentioned how I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> um, and I, I just what's on my heart is the idea of having a spiritual standard or a spiritual diet. A spiritual and diet, yes. When you have a standard or a diet 
there are things that don't even become an option. Yes. So because I'm vegetarian, mm-hmm. meat is not even, or, or, yeah, so meat is not an option. And so mm. when you hold yourself to a certain spiritual authority, mm. you don't accept any, any other thing, any other doctrine or any other thing that comes with being of, of, of another diet. And so mm. when we wow. read the scripture wow. and we're talking about, you know, I don't need to eat milk. I don't need to drink milk if I'm eating meat. I'm, I now have a new selection of, of options is what I'm. Wow. And exactly. I just think of how very much of what we're talking about in terms of there's so much more than identity. There's so much more than what you choose to subscribe to. And exactly. Limited for this long. And like you said, time and time again, if Daniel knew more hmm. than the soothsayers, and we're over here talking about, you know, the name, the name or debating anything. the name, exactly debating the name. Then th- we're not even tapping into our potential. But if my standard is greater than what is, then I'm not worried about that. Exactly, exactly. Add to that, Can I, flow. Like flow. We were literally talking about this earlier today with with our elders, right? In that you have, okay. To start with base one, Isaiah himself said, he raised the dead, he healed the sick, mm. the blind. Mm. And he says, greater things than these will you do in my name. In my name. Let's talk about what other people did. Moses split the sea, doing miracle mm. after miracle. Daniel had all the knowledge. Great mm-hmm. stairs, right? Mm-hmm. Joseph, mm-hmm. all the languages. Mm-hmm. Everything he did, Pharaoh said, okay. All of these people had the spirit of the most high on them. None. Mm. But Isaiah's sacrifice called the same spirit who was performed yes. to be inside of us. And he yes. said, things in these will you do in my name. Exactly. And that means the same spirit who gave Daniel all that knowledge. The same spirit that gave Moses the ability to provide all the, to, to do, perform all those miracles. The same spirit yes. that filled with all of his knowledge. The same spirit yes. brought David to win battle after battle after battle at insurmountable odds. The wisdom of Solomon, all that is the same spirit. And that spirit that was on them is now in us. Exactly. Be doing exactly what they were doing, but more. But more. But church, Either. Kingdom, over Either. and over, Either. Yeah. kingdom of heaven is coming. Kingdom of heaven exactly. is coming. It's within you. The kingdom is within you. We are supposed to be manifesting the kingdom. The kingdom is within you. Kingdom, Congo, Ekenga, Congo, Congo lives within you. <laughs> Bantu languages. Okay. For everyone who partakes only in milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. For everyone who partakes, partakes only in milk is unskilled. So if you eat milk, you're unskilled. So it takes skills to break down the word. How many, do you know what the problem is? We have babies preaching to babies. Ouch. We have babies on the pulpit preaching to babies. We have babies in the Hebrew assemblies. We have babies in church preaching to babies. That's what so much noise. What, what are babies known for noise? What is noise? Slander, gossiping, the name, you're a baby. Oh, he said this, she said this, he said this, you stole a baby. That's how you know someone is a baby. You know how uh, babies cry all the time? Whenever you see someone, oh no, attacking someone, oh, no, you stole a baby. You are unskilled in the word of righteousness. It takes skill to be spiritual. It takes a certain skill to, 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 to be able to divide the word. That is what the Bible says. Daniel could understand enigmas. He could understand the secret sayings. He was skilled in spirit. Are we skilled in spirit? Or are we still babies? The milk, the milk, the milk. To be a skillful spiritual man, you have to eat the meat. And meat is hard. Some of the things we share here, even on Sarah Singer's page, is hard to take. Yes. Some of the things Tsiba Malonga shares is hard to take. Some of the things Pastor Melo shares is very, very hard to take. (laughs) 
You know what I'm saying? But that is the meat. So our problem, we have an immature assembly. We have an immature Hebrew movement. Immature. Babies preaching to babies. That's our problem. Our problem is not the devil. Our problem is not the voodoo in Africa. That's not our problem. Or the voodoo in New Orleans. No. Our problem is immaturity. Because once we are mature, we will even control demons. We won't fear demons. When someone curses you, you'll laugh. It's like, man, pss, I'm, I'm mature. Our biggest problem is not the devil or demons, the voodoo of Africa. No, our biggest problem is our immaturity because we have babies preaching to babies. Mm -hmm. 30 years in the ministry, whatever, you're still a baby. Mm -hmm. Flow. And what you're saying, I think that goes along with babies being babies, is that counsel and covering. Mm. Someone who you are close enough to who can call you out and tell you. And I say that from a place of um, not self-affirming to, to associate myself with being of any level of prestige, but to emphasize the value of wise counsel wise counsel the value of being under a mentorship or someone who is willing to call you out mm. that's deep that's deep that, that's a whole another teaching on itself yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> verse, but I verse 14 that, that little too soon. okay okay <laughs> verse 14 but solid food belongs to those who are full age mm -hmm. What age is he speaking about? Spiritual age. If there is physical age, then there is spiritual age. How old are you spiritually? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Yeah. How old are you spiritually? Mm -hmm. Solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That's how you can see one is a babe and one is of full age because they cannot take solid food. You can be a pastor, but you're still a babe. Exactly. You can be a prophet, but you're still a babe. You can be a morena, as you guys say, more. You're still a babe. How old are you spiritually? Mm -hmm. And the Bible answers. How, how do we know that you're spiritual? Those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So spiritual maturity is about sensitivity to the spirit. Mm -hmm. Those who can exercise their senses. Wait a minute. But he's speaking about spirituality. Do you know we have five senses in the natural world? Right? Touch, smell, taste, sight, hear, and what? What are your five senses? Touch, Touch yeah. That's the last. Touch, uh, smell, nose, smell, hear, Taste and what? Y'all comment it. below. <laughs> Wait, touch. That's it right there. And then hear, see, hearing, taste. seeing, right. smelling, and taste, right? right? Just like we can we can experience spiritual sen um, natural senses, we can experience spiritual senses. Mm -hmm. Do you know you can touch in the spirit? Mm. How do you touch in the spirit? Faith. Mm, you, can, you can smell in the spirit Discernment You can see in spirit You can hear Wow That's why people say this, something don't smell right That's crazy something don't, Exactly, something don't smell right Why? You've exercised your senses So the whole Bible is about spirituality It's not about religion yeah. it's, it's talking about your spiritual senses so we have to exercise our spiritual senses, mm -hmm. our spiritual senses of sight, our spiritual sense of hearing. You can see what others don't see. You can hear what others don't hear. You can smell and sense what others don't, don't smell and sense. And you can touch what others don't touch. It's all about spiritual maturity. And spiritual maturity has got nothing to do with natural age. Mm -hmm. It's how much do you, do you exercise your spirit? How much do you, do you have spiritual muscles? You know, it takes time to build muscles in the natural world. It takes time to build muscles in the spiritual world. How do you exercise your spiritual senses? Praying and fasting. 
praying and fasting. What I do is this. I pray and I fast. I pray in the spirit a lot. I speak the scriptures and, and, I, and I listen to Bantu music worship. I exercise my senses the whole day. I'm always listening to music, Bantu worship. I'm exercising my senses. The more you exercise your senses, you, you start growing spiritually. You will hear in the spirit. You will see in the spirit. You will touch in the spirit. You become a spiritual man. So we have many Hebrews who are carnal. We have many Christians who are carnal. So we need to be of full age. And once your senses are heightened and you're spiritual, you can eat the meat and the mysteries. There are many mysteries the Most High is trying to reveal to us. But, but we are carnal. And if you read there, he says, how do you know that you are spiritual or full age? You can discern between good and evil. Mm. How do you know somebody is not spiritually mature? They cannot discern good and evil. They call what is good evil and what is evil good. Mm. For example, we talk about the third eye. It scandalized people. How can you be a leader of an assembly and you don't know that the third eye is not demonic? These are things the Spirit taught me in my room. I didn't need no Bible school or no Hebrew assembly. Years ago, the Spirit told me about the X-Men and all these things. I remember, years ago, in my room, the Spirit would show me things I would write down. No one taught me. The Spirit taught me. Hallelujah. The reason why people cannot understand these messages is because they are not, fully, they are not of full age. Mm -hmm. It's sad. The Most High wants to reveal things, secrets to his chosen people. But we are not of full age to understand. Why do you think Isaiah would, would speak in parables? And he said, decode the parables. Because some of those precious things he didn't want the others to hear. There are certain mysteries the Most High is hiding from us because we're not mature. How can you give gold and diamonds to a little baby? Mm -hmm. There are gold, diamonds in the spirit, mysteries that the Most wants to reveal, solid food, but we, he cannot release it. Why? We are immature. We cannot discern. How is it possible we cannot discern what is good or evil? There are people, there are people who, who, who can't discern spiritual activities. When an angel moves, they call it a demon. When a demon moves, they call it an angel, you're immature. You don't know. When it's a malaki, you, you don't know when it's a demon. When someone prophesies to you, you don't know, is this the spirit of Yah? Is this the devil? Or is it his own thoughts? You're still immature. Yeah. In I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. <clears throat> In layman terms, that's just like eating McDonald's and expecting to go run a marathon. <laughs> You know, what is your spirit? If the, if the standard is, is vegetarian, is plant-based, is healthy, then you're not even exactly. eating McDonald's. Exactly. That's not a conversation. So setting the exactly. standard for greatness, exercising that is what gets you. Seeking the most high. Hallelujah. Is the, the, the outcome. Is the Hallelujah. Outcome. You exercise your spirit. By meditation, yeah. praying and fasting, meditating the word day and night, listening to music, spending time with spiritual people, watching spiritual videos, like, you know, whatever. Why is it, for example, some of you, when you came in this awakening, you're like, wow, this guy's got knowledge. A month later, you've grown so much and you, you're like, I, I can't watch this channel anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an example. That's an example of being spiritually immature. When you brought up the example of the child, what do you do? You say the same things over and over to the child. No. Hallelujah. It's hot. No. Hot. No. Sleep time. Sleepy time. You mm. hungry? You hungry? You want food? Mm. Mimi's? Mm. Sleep? Mm. That's it. Mm. The same conversations you have every day. Same conversation. You can't talk about what are you going to do tomorrow? <laughs> what Deuteronomy you do? 28. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Edom, Edom, 
Esau, Edom. Um, even in the Hebrew Israelite movement, it's the same conversation over My goodness. and over. Chapter 6, verse 1. We're going to get deeper. Check this out. I want to show you how immature we all are. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Messiah, <laughs> let, us go on, let us go on to perfection. Oh, perfection exists. Who how says perfection? Who says perfection does, does not exist? Oh, it's in the Bible. What did Isaiah say? Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. There's perfection in the Bible. There's perfection in the Bible. Don't believe what people say. There is perfection in the Bible. And I'll show you what the Bible, what the Bible means by perfect, perfection. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Nobody, nobody will teach you. Oh, but I'm not perfect. Uh, I'll, I'll teach what, what is perfection. When the Bible speaks of perfection, it's, it speaks of your love walk. Mm. It's your love walk. Hallelujah. It's your, because the Bible says Abraham walked upright with the most high, but Abraham lied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dawidi was upright with the most high, but Dawidi sinned. But he was a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Understand the Bible in its context. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfection. So we are supposed to, we're supposed to be in our, we're supposed to be perfecting our giftings. Perfect, perfecting our hearing, perfecting our seeing, and our love walk. Perfecting our love walk. It's not easy. Not easy. You know, I, I, uh, I won't lie to you. When that certain assembly attacked me, my flesh was raging that day. My flesh was raging. I had to pray to calm down. And if you watch the video I did with Brother Masia, you know I was... You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm still not dead. I need to die. I need to die more. I need to die. I need to die more. Me who preaches to you, me who prophesies to you, I was tempted to, to do a diss record, a diss track. I was about to rap for the first time in years. I was going to drop a hit em up part two. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, 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 let's go. Okay. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards Yah. So preaching repentance is grade one. Oh my goodness. So preaching repentance is grade one. So repentance is even, the first. Even just have the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards faith Yah. towards God. Yeah. So, grade one. Ex exactly. So having faith. If you tell someone, oh, have faith in God, brother. Have faith in God. He's still a babe. Because we, we're not supposed to, to believe anymore. We know. We're not believers anymore. No. We are knowers. <laughs> oh, I'm a believer. Oh, I'm a believer. No. I know. Yes. Paul said, I know in whom I believe in. Mm. I think Philip says, I know in whom I believe. Can you find me that scripture? Paul says, I know in whom I believe. I know in whom I believe. Come on. Oh, have faith in God, brother. Believe in God. Believe in Yah. Have faith. You are still a baby. If you still have to believe, oh, you're still doubting. We're still babes. So repentance is still babes. Okay? Having faith towards Yah, you're still a baby. If I have to tell you, oh, brother, believe. Oh, it's going to be all right, brother, believe. We are still babies. Uh, <laughs> Woo! So, so, sorry? Second Timothy. Uh, well, yeah. Can you read it for me? For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hallelujah. I know in whom I have believed. When someone tells you, uh, oh, no, you're a believer. Tell the man I've graduated from, from believing. I know. <laughs> I know. I know there is something, there's a knowledge within me. Hallelujah. Even if they say we found the bones of Isaiah in Israel, they show me the bones of Isaiah. He never rose from the dead. I know in whom I believe. Because mm. I have seen him. I don't need the Bible to tell me. I saw him. I experienced him. There's nothing you can tell me. Yes. Hallelujah. 
I've experienced the third eye. There is nothing you can tell me. For you, at your baby stage, it's demonic. You're still in grade one, brother. <laughs> We've graduated. Hallelujah. People all know speaking in tongues is of the devil. Oh, brother. For you, for me, I've experienced it. Mm. I've sp spoken in tongues and in interpreted German, interpreted uh, 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 Portuguese. I've spoken in tongues and interpreted, you know what I'm saying? The other time I was speaking in telepathy with my friend. Let me tell you the story. Do you guys know this, this pastor who supposedly raised someone from the dead uh, uh, in the coffin? He's in South Africa. He's from Congo. Yeah. yeah. I won't say his name because they might sue me. That's how dirty they are. Two months before that event, I've got a friend of mine who's a prophet. He said, I saw this man in a coffin. Two months before that event happened, I saw this man in a coffin. And the day that event happened, that friend of mine, he's got a, he's got a church just down the street here. It's like two minutes from where I stay. He walked in my house, right? And he, he, he came in. When he came in, we saw that man's leg on the coffin, right? Where he said he had raised someone from the dead. Now, we had friends who believe in this man. We don't believe in this man. So not to offend them, he communicated to me in spirit. We spoke in telepathy. He tells me, look. I said, yes. He said, I cannot say, but I will tell you tomorrow. We were speaking in spirit, telepathy. Now you're going to tell me it's demonic. Mm. Because you've never experienced it, it's demonic to you. I exercise my senses. We are, we are spiritual beings mastering a human experience. Come on. We are made in the image and the likeness. In his image and his likeness. Mm -hmm. Who were we before we came in this, in this uh, flesh? God. We, we, Sarah and I exactly. speak a lot about how the church, the religious spirit, essentially, has taught us to fear or demonize what was pure. And to first understand, even the church says it all the time. Shaitani doesn't create, he just perverts. Exactly. If he's not a they say it here. All he they can, say it here, but not here. All he hmm. can do is twist, pervert lie about what is already here so even looking in just your regular bible not even counting the 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 other books okay in uh the story of joseph when the brothers come to visit him and he sends them back and he puts mm -hmm. a cup in benjamin's bag and then sends his servant after them and they say why'd you steal from me don't you know i use this cup for divination mm. it's witchcraft you know, we look at it as being as being witchcraft, but Joseph did divination. Let's let's break it down. You see, you must interpret things from uh, from our perspective. Listen to the word carefully. Divination, right. divine nation. We are a divine nation. So, we're not saying go into divination, but the true word is divine nation. So we are a nation who walks in the divine. So Satan perverted and says divination. That is why people don't believe in the prophetic. If I had to, do you know, I can have a prophetic service online. People won't believe. That's why I don't do prophecies online. You know why? Because everybody's doing it. People don't believe in these things. It's sad. We talk about, we keep talking about people not believing and having lack of faith. But, and, and you, you'd mentioned it earlier about to not believe is believe, you're, you are possessed by a spirit. There is a spirit behind all things. Exactly. And in disbelief ultimately is the spirit of fear of another. Exactly. The idea of how you said that false prophets essentially only see evil, only see demonic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're not seeing things of the most exactly. positive angels, you're not discerning that. Exactly. So to, sit everything. Not to, to sit here and have more faith in, in demons and believe everything spiritual is of demons is to live in the state of fear. You're a baby, you're a spiritual baby. 
because you cannot discern Malachi, you cannot discern angels, you cannot discern even when you dream. I had a dream. I don't know if he's the most. He stole a baby. Mm -hmm. He stole a baby. He stole a baby. And I don't know if. I, yeah, go on. It's not go to on. sit here and 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 condemn, but it's to share that to push you exactly that there's to work push you done, and then we don't have exactly. to rest and settle at a place of not knowing. And not always running to the prophet to say, what does my dream mean? But to literally exactly fast, exactly in exactly that spiritual exactly. Growth, that you don't have exactly. to for forever. That's the message. Exactly. When when uh I remember I'm from the church, uh, it's called Yahweh Shama Assembly, my old assembly, where my dad is the second in command. And I had a pastor, his name was, is, is the, the famous pastor I talk about, Apostle Zachariah and Piana. 100% Muluba. Hey, very proud Muluba guy. He, when you pray with him at his home, you only pray in Chiluba, mm -hmm. the language of the Maliki, as the Luba people said. And I salute all the Luba people of Katanga and Kasai. <laughs> okay. They came to our home. I remember I saw power in my home. I saw my sisters were drunk in the spirit, whatever. I'd never seen this before. I was 13 years old. And uh, this guy prophesied to me. There was another pastor, Pastor Lipson. He says, you, at the time, he said, God has called you. He spoke in French, eh? He says, Dieu t'a appelé. Il faut prêcher la parole de Dieu. God has called you. You must preach the word of God. That, that was the day my mom told me how I was born. They never told me how I was born. When I was born, they changed my name and how uh, an angel appeared to my mom and says, give him back to, to me. And she said, when I was three, I prophesied my brother's name. But I always knew I was different. I don't know. I always knew I was different. But at the age of 13, they said, I must preach, right? He said, read your Bible. He says, don't forget your French because you, you'll be preaching in French and English and every night preach to your family. So every night at seven, half, we prayed and at half past seven, I would preach to, to my family. My first preaching, my parents were laughing. They were laughing at me, even my siblings. I read the Bible, finished it. I started preaching. They weren't laughing anymore. They weren't laughing anymore. I started, and the prophetic started growing. So now I started preaching outside. My parents got afraid. My parents got afraid. They got intimidated. <laughs> They're like, what do you know about God? We know him more than you. What experience do you have? But the most I would speak to me about my family, I would see this. I saw my dad's car before it came. I saw this. I saw this. The problem, I thought my parents got afraid. So they brought pastors to come and help me. I grew you know how? Commitment. Wake up. You don't have to be a prophet, whatever. I would wake up at night. I pray. Read my Bible. Watch preachings. Read my Bible. Exercising my senses. I grew so much. I outgrew the church. Now, certain messages that I used to hear, this, this is not for my level. <laughs> it's not pride. It's confidence. You listen to people. No, 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 no. This ain't for my level. I started getting frustrated. I wanted more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Most of you are, are feeling the same thing that I'm feeling. You watch these Hebrew assemblies, he, the same stuff. Is, isn't there more? The biggest mistake we limit the most high, whether in Christianity or whether in the Hebrew Israelite religion, mm -hmm. the lack of pure spirituality. I don't mean now go and, and go, to, uh, go and see a witch doctor. No, that's not what I'm saying. You can pray and fast. You outgrow the witch doctors. You can prophesy more than them. Exactly. That's what you're trying to say. Exactly. Go on. And I know your some people, quite honestly, can be intimidated by your testimony because it, it's one of power from the very beginning. Um, okay. And one of the things that I think really is of emphasis to me is that so many of us have, have been in the world. And yes, we've found the most high and we've come to whether it be these assemblies and we've awakened. 
and there's a there's a desire and a and a power that we've seen and experienced in the world. Okay. And and we're looking and searching for that in the in the within this awakening and through the most high. And I can yes. assure you and promise you that through praying and fasting, that yes. the ascension only happens through seeking the most high. Because exactly. my testimony is I reached out to Brother Yonata a year ago. I was hungry. I was asking Hallelujah. questions. I was in the emails. But one of the things that I am most thankful for is the timing of the most high. Hallelujah. Of, of yes. the discipline of being patient because the journey is is humbling to yes say. okay sometimes when i speak about my testimony people might say but this guy is perfect no i mean i was shook i was shook last week i wanted to there were f words i wanted to say the f word i wanted to say was forgiveness you know what i'm saying so <laughs> yay you know what i'm saying though i'm spiritual but hey I said, man, check your love walk again. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? When you fall, get back up. I made many mistakes. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? But spir spiritually, when it came to the giftings, you see, we, uh, we're going to get the uh, concerning character. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now, we're just focusing on the giftings. Okay. It goes. So, of the doctrine of, of baptisms, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So all of these things are grade one. Yeah. Read those things. The doctrine <laughs> of baptisms. Doctrine. People still debating baptism. You're still a baby. <laughs> Should I be baptized in the water, out of the water? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Spirit? Oh. Must I put an ash? You are still a baby. <laughs> of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Hell, hell. Is hell real? Oh, oh hell. Oh, I had a vision of hell. You know these people had a vision of hell. I had a vision of hell. Ha! You had a vision of hell. Black people are living hell on earth. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I had a vision of hell. Everybody has a, Go on YouTube. Everybody went to hell, 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 hell. Okay, good. That's cute. Okay? That's but you, you're still a baby. You're still a baby. Am I saying hell does not exist? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying is, why can't you experience, the Apostle Paul said he was caught in the third heaven. Mm -hmm. He heard things he could not even express. Why everything is, I saw hell, I saw the witch in your family, I saw the demons in your family, I saw demons. Why are you so obsessed with demons? When the prophets in the Bible saw angels. Mm -hmm. The Bible speaks more about angels than demons. Babies. You're obsessed with demons, obsessed with witchcraft. Everything you see is demons, voodoo, demons, demons, demons. You're obsessed. You're still a baby. You are carnal. You cannot discern between the good and the evil. Uh, Hebrews 5, verse 12. You're still a baby. Here. Yeah. You feel me? Mm -hmm. it, it, that, that convicting mentality builds a level of hostility, fear, and just a, a physical and carnal sense of closed off anger and rage. Exactly. That's the harnessing of negative, pervasive energy, really. But that's all. Exactly. That's, an, that's another issue for another day. Yes. So with, with that practice, with what we just read in, in Hebrews 6, is you get them fearful. Hell, 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 demon, demon, demons. You get them fear. So now you get this group of people who will perpetually forever be babies because now they've just got salvation yeah. as a get out of jail. Exactly. Salvation. exactly. So it's, it's a way to avoid hell, period. Then those who are halfway interested in preach verse two, doctrines of baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. That's all they know. That's what they see each month, each month in, month out, each year, each Easter Sunday. Mm. So you never learn perfection you never learn what you're supposed exactly. to exactly never learn how to do greater things than Messiah did hallelujah iso edom edom iso edom what edomites we know what next you feel me mm -hmm. okay uh first corinthians chapter three
First Corinthians chapter three, from verse one to verse four. Yo, sorry. Uh, can you pause? I need to. Okay. Okay. First Corinthians chapter three, from verse one to verse four. Okay, and I, brethren, could not speak to you, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Stop, stop. I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people or maturity. So the Apostle Paul, Sola, had many mysteries, but it says, you know what? I have to come to your level of ignorance. <laughs> I have, to, I, have to, I, have to, I have to appease your ignorance. So I have to humble myself to your level because I'm, such a, I'm at such a high level spiritually. Mm-hmm. That for you to understand me, I must come and speak in a carnal way. Why? Because you are babies in Messiah. So if you are babies in Messiah, then there's also maturity in Messiah. Mm-hmm. So there, there, there are dimensions and there are growth, there are levels in Messiah. First of all, Christ is not the surname of Jesus or Yesiah. People still believe that his surname was Jesus Christ. No, it means the anointed one. Mm-hmm. The anointed one and his anointing. So Christ is a place. Christ is a function. Because you're in Christ, you're not in Jesus. Jesus or Yesiah is in heaven. Christ is the spirit. Christ never left. <laughs> Christ Christ never left Yesiah left Christ is eternal He's a spirit Man Yeah Man. When, when will our people grow up? Christ is not the surname of Yesiah Christ, Messiah Amoshia, Masia Messi, Masia Purification It's a place, it's a function I am in Messiah. He's in me. So he's saying, I want to give you spiritual secrets, but you're still babies. Mm -hmm. You are babies. Cry babies. You're still babies. You'll not receive these mysteries. You, you, you had shared something with me before and it, it moved into further revelation. When you said that, when you were talking about the disciples, you said they laid hands on people. And they were healed. They were healed. Not that they prayed to Jesus. They, no, they didn't pray. And they were healed. And then... They were, they go ahead. No, no, go on, go on. I was saying, and then that further related into Isaiah saying, greater things than these will you do in my name. Not yes. by my name. People say, by, my name, by the name of Jesus. In, mm. Which can in. be looked at as when a wife becomes or a woman becomes a wife to a husband, she takes on his wow. name. She signs, wow. she makes decisions, she makes purchases, she does uh, transactions in her husband's name because she has taken on his name. She can exactly that same authority as the husband because she is in his name. Not by, she doesn't sign a check by my husband's name. No, she signs it by her name with his last name. Exactly. That's different. That's deep. That's so deep. That's so deep. And if you're married, uh, say, my wife is married to me. She doesn't have to go around shouting, I am married to Jonathan. I am married to Jonathan. No. She can be quiet. She mm-hmm. goes to the bank. People shouting when they pray. Ah, making a noise. No. It, when you have power, you don't need to shout. You, you're calm. Look at, look at um, a police officer, especially you guys in America. When you're black, you're driving while black. You, the officer is there. Oh, you've got this huge truck. This huge truck. You're driving fast. The officer can come like this and the truck stops. He doesn't have to say, hey, stop, stop, stop. No, you see, are you black? Oh, he's white. Let me just stop. Authority. You don't need to shout. People, oh, let's pray. People are shouting, whatever. People think when they shout, it's power. You stole a baby. The apostle Peter healed with his shadow. Did he shout? He walked and his shadow was healing people. Come on, man. Yes. 
He didn't have to shout. And when those people were healed, he didn't go on Facebook and, and Twitter. Hey, nah. <laughs> he was cool. He's like, oh, psst. man, this is normal. This is my life. Oh, man, I prophesied and I saw a vision. Psh. The Apostle Paul said, I was caught up in the third heaven. I heard of things that I couldn't even say. Today, someone sees a vision. He goes to heaven. He writes a book. I saw heaven. He becomes a millionaire. Come on. You're, you, you're still a baby. Yeah. Oh, the name. His name is this. His name is that. Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Yahuwah. Zombie. Oh, cool. Man, in his name, when, once you are, you are one with him, look at, look at the way prophet Elijah prayed when he confronted the prophets of Baal. Baal, Baala. Baala is Lingala for marriage. Baal, Baala. Okay? They were cutting themselves. They were, oh, you know, fire, fire. Oh, yes, let's pray. Oh, you know, they were cutting themselves and everything. They were praying, praying. They were dancing in their assembly, dancing, trying to get fire, fire moving. You know, they had swords and everything. Elijah, what did Elijah do? Elijah. He just called on the monster. He, he, he called on the monster and the fire came down. He didn't have to, oh, no. Don't be, spirit, don't be spiritually intimidated. Excuse me? He said, pray harder. Maybe you got to sleep. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you don't have to show people. Oh, no. You know what? The most high is not like you. That's voodoo. When you have to, ooh, ooh, pray, ooh. Like, like in churches. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. Once you're connected to him, you don't even have to shout. Look yeah. at Isaiah. Before he raised Lazarus from the dead. Father, I thank you that you hear me. You always hear me. Why? He was in the Father. The Father was in him. Then he shouted. There are people who shout, but they're not in him. Mm. That's why you go to church. It's, it's an emotional experience. You go to an assembly. It's an emotional experience, but your problems are still there. You're still a baby. <laughs> Woo! I sense the spirit of you. Verse 2. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. Mm. Hallelujah. There are mysteries. There are deep mysteries the Most High wants to give us. Hallelujah. But we cannot receive while we are babies. Do you teach PhD calculus to a first grader? Mm -hmm. Though there are some first graders who are geniuses. <laughs> There are some people, that's, that's exceptions. There are some people who are just, like there are people who are born prophets. Do you know that? You are, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are people who are born prophets. There are people who, who are called in the prophetic. And there are people who become prophets later. Some people are born prophets. Yelimeya, he was called from his mother's womb. I claim that prophecy. Uh, John the Baptist, he was filled from his mother's womb. Yisaiah was filled from his mother's womb. What a grace. So before he was born, he was filled with the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? But there are mysteries the most I want to share with us. But it says, it says what? You couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle it. How many we are living in, in these last days when knowledge is increasing. We are seeing the prophetic at a high level mysteries are being revealed there's many more things the most i want to reveal but he cannot why we are still babes because we cannot handle it and how do you know that you're still a baby read this verse verse three for you are still carnal yes continue read or where there mm -hmm. are strife and divisions among you mm. you are not carnal and behaving like mere men. Check this out. Check this out. You see? I'm behaving like mere men. Exactly. You're behaving like mere men. So we're not mere men. <laughs> we are gods. Wow. Psalms 82. Wow. We are gods. So it's like men. We are gods. We are supposed to live our God nature. Made in his image. So he, so, so he was shocked. You're behaving like mere men. Like the average man. We're not like everybody, brothers and sisters. <laughs> it may sound pride, proud, I don't care. We are not mere men. We have the Messiah within us, the wisdom of Yah within us. So he says, why are we behaving like mere men? 
you're behaving like mere men. Yeah. You are X-Men, not mere men. You are X-Men. It's like, you X-Men, how, how do you know you're carnal? Envy, strife, division. Mm. Read, read, read the, uh, the, the last verse. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when exactly. one says, I am a... <sighs> I already know <laughs> I am... For when one Woo! says, I am a Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? <laughs> exactly. I am from this assembly. Oh, <laughs> I am from... My morena is, is the best morena in the world. I pray in this church. My... I'm from Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar is the best. Oh, I pray at Benny Hinn's church. You, you start fighting. Oh, I mean this, I mean this truth awakening. I think, I, I think Watchmen, Muluba is the best Watchmen everywhere. I don't like Watchmen Sutu or Watchmen from America. Oh, I'm from this side. I'm from, I'm from this side. You know exactly where I'm going. Yeah. I did a message on who sat on you on when the Malachi appeared to Joshua. Woo, Yozua. I told Yozua, which side are you on? Yozua asked him, which side are you on? He says, I'm on neither. So Paul is saying, Sola is saying, that if we have envy, strife, division, we are carnal, we are babies. That is why, even though we were attacked, I told Brother Masia, bro, and I, I wanted to respond in the Muluba way. So that I wanted to respond. I wanted to respond. Yeah, no, I wanted to respond in the Muluba way. Huh? Muluba, ask people. When are you going to come to Congo? Ask people. Show me, the, show me the Muluba people. I wanted to respond in a Muluba way. But I was, ah, you know, but I'm in Christ, you know? The love of Yah. That's why even when we, we did that response, you know what I'm saying? I was like, and I still respect that, that elder. Hallelujah. Because when I look at him, eh, hey, same Congolese. Huh? He's a Muntu. I look at him like, look at this guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Congos don't fight Congos. Mm -hmm. Congos don't fight Congos. We fought for too long. I want, you know what I'm saying? It, it, shows, it shows also that I was, I was very immature also, but I had to crucify my flesh. I had to, you know, you guys calm me down, you know, and uh, who else calmed me down? Sister Anna calmed me down and Brother Masia calmed me down. And I was like, yeah, hallelujah. So I was also trying to bring division. I had to repent, hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? So if we fight, oh no, I cannot listen to, to this guy. If what I teach is not of the most high, pray and fast. There's a, there's a mother who said, you know, when Jonathan taught on the third eye, at first I didn't receive it. But I prayed. And the most high said, no, it's of me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's many other things that I want to teach on. But people will be... Man, there's many, there's one thing I respect Mikael Massa for. You know Mikael Massa? He says things raw. I said, brother, please, mm -hmm. be careful. He's a, no, I challenge. I said, no, brother, please. I know those things that you're saying. I understand them from the, I understand. But our people are still, are just waking up. You want to teach them the deep stuff like this? They won't understand. You know, but I, I do respect him because he's got the courage uh, to say Tiba, he just says it straight. Tiba, Tiba is Tiba, you know? But I'm just saying is, when there's division, when we are divided, it means that we are still carnal. When you see a moon to fighting another moon to, the eye is carnal. Hallelujah. Remember even when uh, the story of Massa, he saw two Bantus fighting and he wanted to go and stop them. They're like, who do you think you are? Our people love to fight. <laughs> we love to fight. Oh, I'm from this assembly. I'm from this. No, we are carnal. If we bring division, we are carnal. We may, we, we may agree to disagree in love. The apostle Paul disagreed with Peter. He rebuked him in love. You know what I'm saying? Just because, just because, ah, do you know, for the sake of unity, I could just come and say, Yahuwah and Yahusha. I could say that. Hallelujah. You know? But we know our Congo heritage. 
Hallelujah. And I don't minimize any name, but we know our Congo heritage. Mzambi mm Mpungu -hmm. Tulendo. And that's the same. The, the Balubas will say, Nzambi Maweja. Yahweh, ma, Nzambi Maweja Wachama. Yahweh Shama. Nz I, I mean, I heard my pastor pray like this. My mother pray like this. We have a heritage. That's where we come from. I'm going to deny my heritage because somebody saw something on Wikipedia. Okay, so in, re in regards to that. Yes, sir. Very, very simple solution is even in monks, all of these Hebrew Israelites and all of the awakening teachings, we're all teaching about the synagogue of Satan or those who say exactly. they're at or not, right? Claim, mm, mm. Claiming to be the Jews of the Bible, but we, mm. know we know they lied about who they are. We know they lie about what true Israel are, but why are we still mm -hmm. interpreting the Bible through their language? Now nah, that's, you op Brother Makaya, you're opening a can of worms. I didn't want to have to deal with this I don't have the energy. I still have to go to sleep. You know, I haven't slept the whole night. <laughs> if you want to go that side, I, I'm not going to defend you. I'm kidding. Exactly. <laughs> but but, but the, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to point out is that when you realize, number one, that the true chosen people and where they are from. Exactly. The same way that you researched the Jewish people, the Ashkenazi. Mm way you research them the same way you research their language the same way you research the books in the language that they wrote why don't you spend the same time doing the same research i mean you could exactly. you could do the shortcut and just ask the most high directly <laughs> but, <I> mean, <laughs> but but who does that oh that's that's deep who does that with the same effort how do you compare a, a name unless you understand the people who are calling someone by that name and what that name meant exactly and I challenge, I want to see how spiritual you are. Come to Congo. I'll take you to the voodoo priests. Come in the name of Yahusha, Yahuwah, and Jesus. Go and battle them in a debate. Do you know why we, I don't talk about voodoo in, from Africa? Because if I do, I'll scare people. I have seen things. I delivered my own sister. Is she here? No, she said she went to work. My sister, she's so prophetic. Okay? But prophetic people must pray. There was a time where um, I remember she wanted, to, she wanted to commit suicide. She took pills. My mom called me. I rushed. And I saved her. Like... You know, she, she, she was going to go. She said that she was going, but a hand rescued her. Like she saw, like an angel rescued her. She wanted to commit suicide because she was going through some tough times. Never give up. And my sister's prophetic. So she went through a period of depression and she allowed a demon to possess her. Mm. Hey, I was with a pastor friend of mine. We, were, we went to pray for my sister. She spoke to me in perfect Swahili. In the voice of my grandmother. From my father's side. I know voodoo. That is the same to talk about voodoo. I know voodoo. You, I saw my own sister. Another sister of mine lost her mind when I was still 13 years old. So we used to go to high school. I used to fast going to high school when I was in grade eight, my younger brother was still young. I used to fast and pray. We don't eat. But you go to school, you write exams, you come back because you have to go and pray for your sister. My sister, had, my other sister had lost her mind. She used to walk. We were in Limpopo. She was walking on the streets of Johannesburg. She lost her mind. Somehow a pastor saw her and called my dad. My dad went to go pick her up. Five hours. She, you know what I'm saying? We, I saw how the most high healed my sister from mental illness. In my home. And you want to tell me Nzambi's voodoo? I'll curse on you, bro. I, not I read in a book. I saw, I saw uh, how my sister got delivered, my other sister. I saw, I cast out the demons from a top doctor who was working with my dad. You want to tell me I'm in voodoo? 
I always say, never criticize what you don't understand. That's why I never talk about the Native American Indians. You'll never see me. If I talk about the Native American Indians, I must go to America, meet the chiefs, meet the shamans, spend time with them. Then I can talk about them. That's why I reacted the way that I reacted. You don't know me. I have seen these hands. I've seen miracles in that name. So you want to tell me I'm in voodoo. If that is voodoo, bring me something else that can talk my voodoo. I'll follow your voodoo. I'm just speaking in, in layman terms. So when you criticize something, be very careful. I have seen the most high do crazy things in my family. You want to tell me I'm in voodoo. That's what I will tell people is church is grade one. I'm not going to reject everything I learned in church. Because I knew I was a Hebrew, Montu, not from, a, not from an um, American Hebrew Israelites. They tell us, you're the Jews of Congo. There's a book called uh, The Black Jews of Africa. They talk about the Baluba people. We've always known. There's a guy, he came to me, he's a Muluba. He told me, Jonathan, the things you're telling me, my granddad told me. I met another Mukongo girl. She told me, Jonathan, the things you're telling me, my grandmother was telling me. We didn't get these things from a Hebrew Israelite camp. We didn't get these things from, from, from any, no, at home. My pastor, my pastor will tell me, but he was shh. Am I minimizing what African Americans are, are doing? Heck no. We've always believed you are the voice. We've always believed that. But to have the pride to say, no, You've, you know what? There is a life outside America. That's why you guys are doing the, the, the Bantu trips. There is a life outside America. Yeah. There is a life outside America. America is not the only country in the world. Yeah. You've got to see life outside. And I thank the most that you've traveled. Yeah. I, I was, go no, go on, go on, go on. I was just going to say that from the perspective of an African American, and I say that to emphasize that there is a power that is not understood. If we still speak the language of our captors and we have not defeated the spirit of our own captivity, exactly. then the idea to think that we have an authority in the land we were stolen from exactly. is exception. It's clear exactly. exception. And one of the exactly. greatest things that is misunderstood by African Americans is the power and the authority that is within the land and the continent. Man. Exactly. Exactly. And now go ahead. No, 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 go, go. I'm 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 just getting ideas. I'm getting ideas. Yeah. As someone who has been to the continent and not even within the regions of of what I now understand to be essentially zero degrees where it all started, Congo, both historically, physiologically, geographically, I mean, on multiple fronts, biblically, of course, and, and that's exactly. what we stand on. But when you recognize that regardless of any other, any other country, that there is spiritual and authority, talk about territorial spirits, that one must regard and understand that to me is is dangerous to not understand there's, that not there's respect that is there's res exactly there's just let me tell you something why i'm so passionate about the language mm -hmm. my own dad does not speak his mother tongue mm -hmm. my own dad is a european clone my dad he's a medical doctor i respect him but he's a european clone my dad taught me about Israel when I was very, very young. Mm -hmm. When I challenged him on that Israel notion, it was tough. He, he, he couldn't take it. I hear he's researching, so I'm praying for him and I thank you for all the prayers. My own dad does not speak his, his mother tongue. My mom told me because Chiluba was mocked. Because when you speak Chiluba, it was mocked. Everything is mocked. So, so, so in Congo, the number one language is Swahili. If you speak Swahili, you have a certain class. But if you speak Lingala, they look down upon you. 
Wow. Yeah, because Swahili is an international language. So they, they look down on Chiluba and they look down on Kikongo. Chiluba is basically Kikongo because uh, we are the Southern Kingdom. The Baluba and the Bakongo and all these things. It's the same. It's just different here, here and there. So you'll find we, 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 we don't speak our mother tongue. I don't speak my mother tongue. That's why I'm so passionate. I learn with you guys. Mm. I learn through revelation. I hear a word. I don't know how to explain. It's a gift. I hear a word. I never studied the Hebrew, the Palel Hebrew. But when you guys, when I would watch the Hebrew Israelites, I'm like, hey, man, this is Kikongo. Hey, this is Swahili. That's how it came for me. Because my pastor told me that we are the Jews. He told me. Hallelujah. So I'm so passionate. I don't even speak my mother tongue. I don't. I don't. When I meet the Congolese people, they call me a fake Congolese. When I came to South Africa, they call me a fake South African. So the Congolese people who grew up in South Africa, we have a, a certain bond. I don't fit with the Congolese people and I don't fit with South African people. <laughs> so we have a, we're in between. I was also an outcast because I don't speak my mother tongue. I don't. I had to learn. I had to learn my own history. So when I'm passionate about this language, I don't speak it too. I don't. Because my dad was ashamed about his language. I hope you never watched this video. <laughs> my dad. My dad taught us uh, French and, uh, you know, uh, if you parle le français, all these things, you know, he's a very smart man. But from a Eurocentric perspective, my own dad, my own mom, she, she was here a couple of months ago. She told me that we have to give the continent back to white people. My mom. Do you know how hurt I was? Yeah. I, I, that day I walked outside. I said, the Tanzambi. I will not respond to my mom. Let me just take a walk. My own mom. So when I do videos, that's why I'm in pain at times. I see my parents. Like, ah. My mom told me that. After they've killed 10 to 15 million and 20 million people in Congo, you'll still trust white people. That's how brainwashed we are. So when I, people think, you know, when I would do videos, <laughs> you know what it's like? I'm a son of a doctor. You know, Congolese are very proud people. They're like, hey, Dr. Chilombo, we are seeing your son in front of Burger King doing videos. That's, that brings shame to my family. But I hung on. I challenged my dad. Today, he's not, he doesn't say anything. Because, so when people criticize, you don't know where we're from. Mm. It's easy to criticize what you don't understand. I'm from a very proud family. My dad never saw me doing videos or whatever. But I sacrifice my life. I said, I said, I heard the voice. I know the voice of, of the spirit. He says, he says, it's time. And we spoke and look what the most High has done. So when, you know, sometimes I read the comments, people criticize you like, hey, do you know where we're from? We didn't start today. <laughs> huh? Yeah. You know, if, if my pastor was, I can show you my records. The different churches I preached in. The pastors I've sat with and eaten with. They were pastors who used to come to me and humble themselves. Big pastors. You may not know them. They would come to my house. I would teach people who were twice, three times my age. I don't speak about these things because people think, oh no, you're arrogant and proud. Brother Masia knows, knows my testimony. So when you criticize, know what you're criticizing. We've worked with this, we work with the most high, even in Christianity. I saw power. So there's nothing you can tell me. I've experienced all the gifts of the spirit. The only miracle I haven't seen is the resurrection of the dead. I'm, I'm waiting for that day. The day I'll raise someone from the dead. Man, I'm going to wear that white garment. <laughs> you know, and uh, open the... <laughs> man, you know what I'm saying? We come from far. You write a Sometimes book. I... Man, write a book and come on TBN and, and promote my book. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, come on Daystar. Hey, I was, I didn't call myself. Mm -hmm. so, some people think, you know, sometimes we have to speak like this for people to try and see w w where we're from. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like to speak about myself. I, I, I really don't. But at times, these couple of days, I just, hey, man, and you're going to say I'm in voodoo. Mm -hmm. Ah! Mon cher. Huh? Don't play with fire, oh. Come on. 
You know what I'm saying? That's why I never criticize people. When it comes to spiritual things, for me to answer back, you have to move me a lot. I, I don't know your experience uh, with the, the Most High. Even when I met you guys, right? Do you know why we started speaking well? Because I could sense your spiritual background. I knew, no, I'm speaking to people with, who've got a spiritual background. Hallelujah. Did I tell you, oh, bro, call on Zambi. If, if you don't call on Zambi, you're going to go to hell. I didn't tell you that. I said, brother, that's what I believe in. You guys prayed and you saw, that's it. You see what I'm saying? That is maturity. We have immature people. Man, I have seen the most high do things in my family. I saw how he healed my mom. My mom was going to die. She had no blood in her. She, the most high healed her. I saw, my, I saw the most high heal my sister who was going mental. I saw the most high heal my, uh, my other sister. I saw the most high healed my cousin whose leg was going to be amputated, healed. Today he's got two children and you're going to tell me I'm, I'm in voodoo. You don't even know me. Man, I didn't read the Bible. I experienced the Bible. I'm a witness. Not, not I read, I saw, not I believe, I know. You're going to tell me I'm in voodoo. There are levels, brother. <laughs> we, are still in, we are still in grade one when the most I want to take us high. Mm. But if you're still fighting, we are still carnal. Yeah. We're still carnal. Now, are we going to end by this? Uh, first John. I can sense the spirit of Yah. There's a fire in Brother Makaya's heart. Hallelujah. Brother Makaya, the Most High will restore the years the locusts have eaten. Mm. Okay. Don't worry. The years, will, the Most High will do a quick work in you. It will be a quick work. That's what the Spirit of Yah is telling me. Hallelujah. Sister Sarah, I, I, I didn't hear anything unless you give me an offering, so... <laughs> I'll wait on. I'll wait on it. I know she's <laughs> she's she's crazy. No, she's no sister Sarah. I just uh, they saw. Sometimes, you know, we'll speak off air. Her message is so deep that other people are gonna be jealous if if I say so. <laughs> I love you guys very much, man. I really do. Nice. You know, and uh, yeah, I love you guys very much, man. Okay, First John two. Uh, 1 John 2, 12 to, 12 to 14. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven, are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write Stop to there. you. Stop there. I write to you, little children, okay? Because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. So when you're a baby, it's the forgiveness of sins. You know what I'm saying? When you're a baby, you know, oh no, my sins are forgiven. Oh, my sins are forgiven. Oh, my sins are forgiven. You're still a baby. Because Christ died. That was the forgiveness of sins. But he rose again. And the Bible says he became the righteousness of Yah. That's why I say, Christ just didn't come to save you. No. He, his main goal was to make sons and daughters of the Most High. Because if, and salvation is, 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 is a holistic term. Mm. It's yeah. salvation of your mind. Mm. What's the word in Greek? Uh, Sotori or something like that. So, um, Sotori, it means totality. So salvation, why do you think when the Most High delivered the children of Israel, they left with wealth? Where are people saying, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. But the white man still owns the land. <laughs> I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Yes, you pray, you pray, to, you pray. But you have to beg to get a job. Is that really salvation? You're, you may be saved in your spirit, but in your mind and in... We, so salvation is, whole, is holistic. It's your mind, body, spirit. It's everything. It, it encompasses everything. Black people are, are happy. Jesus forgave my sins. Jesus forgave my sins. Yeah, he forgave your sins, but you st we, still, we, we have to beg 
Yes, Jesus forgives your sins, but you're still in wealthy. Mm. You see what I'm saying? When they came to Congo, we had all the wealth. They said, no, heureux le pauvre, ils vont, ils vont entrer au royaume de, de cieux. In other words, blessed are the, are the poor, for this is the kingdom. So they use the scriptures to steal our resources. But the Vatican is the richest, the richest in the world. The Pope, have you seen the Pope's cars? Mm. Huh? Mm. But, but yet we are poor. They said, no, we have to be, we have to be humble. And, and, and we have to be humble. And, and, and uh, man, when I read King Leopold's letter, I say, say ah, that when are we going to get our justice? Man? Ah, it breaks my heart. Mm. Congo, there's everything in Congo. We had everything, the minerals, everything. It's a sin to be poor in Congo. It's a sin to be poor. It's a sin to beg in Congo because we have all the resources there. People become millionaires in one day. You can find diamonds on the ground. You become a millionaire. There are people, with, you become a millionaire in one day. You find diamonds go on the ground. In the ground, you find. You know, a lot of, a lot of the misunderstandings in regards to what Congo represents comes from lack of knowledge of what Congo is. And it's like especially when looking in like the apocrypha you have to be able to see prophetically the connections like for example in jubilees it describes noah and the the part the, the partitioning out of the world to his sons it says noah was ecstatic he was overwhelmingly happy that the best land in the entire world went to shem which we know father of of isolele right Yes. I went on to say that this land was the navel of the earth. Mm. It also says it was the Garden of Eden. It wow. also says that every mineral is found in that land and that the Most Highest promised Noah that those minerals will never run out. It also said that this land was a land full of hills and valleys and waterfalls and that this land Stop was not like. Stop there. Stop there. Do you know there's a place in Rwanda called the land of a thousand mountains? Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you don't find a thousand mountains in Israel, Northeast Africa. There's a place in Rwanda, it's known as the, the thousand mountains. In Rwanda, Congo, there. The, a, a thousand hills. Go on. Um, and it also said, the Most High told them when they were about to take the land, that this land is not like Egypt where you just came. It said, this land drinks the waters from the heavens. Oh. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how people. Can, I don't know how people. I don't know how people still cannot see it. I, Listen, I really don't. I, there is nothing. There is nothing more I can do. <laughs> I, I don't know how people still cannot see it. Anyway, one place on Earth, Congo is literally on the equator. It is zero degrees. It has every mineral. The minerals are not. You know, it's where they've gone to. I, don't, brother Makai, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, Maybe they just needed to hear an American say it. When, when, <laughs> when I talk about Congo, I feel a pain in my heart. Anyway, they. We digress. Let's, let's stick. Anyway, I write to you, little children. Okay, uh, verse 13. I, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. Stop. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him. So when you reach fatherhood, you know him and he knows you. Intimacy. But when you are a young man, check that, you've overcome the devil. So there are different stages of growth. Those who are, your sins are forgiven, my sins are forgiven. You're still a spiritual baby. Okay? But when you're a father or a mother, mature, you know him. In middle age, you fight the devil. Because he says, I write to you, young men, because young men have energy and strength, you're fighting the devil. So you'll find people's always the devil and demons and fighting spiritual demons, demons, demons. You're still a young man. But when you grow as a father, you know him, intimacy. Mm -hmm. So there are different levels of growth. Hallelujah. A father or a mother, you're a nurturer. Now you can help others. And spiritual age doesn't equal natural age. It's all about your commitment. Studying the scriptures, praying, Reading, fasting, you're growing spiritual commitment. 
you will know. Hallelujah. We have to reach a stage of maturity where we become fathers or mothers, where we can, we know him. Hallelujah. We, we don't fight anymore. Excuse me. We don't fight anymore. We don't debate the name. Oh, I'm from this assembly. I'm from this assembly. I'm from Paul. I'm from, no. We've understood the vision. I mean, imagine if you guys had to spend time debating other people. When you guys have a project that can save the world. Imagine that you are, you, are lowering, you are lowering yourself. Imagine you guys have the Bantu project and you're debating uh, the name. That's low. <laughs> That's very, imagine you, you've got the Bantu project and you're about to go to Congo and change the world. Someone wants to, wants to debate you about the name Zambi. Mm -hmm. And it's Zambi who gave you that idea of the project. <laughs> it's Zambi. <laughs> That's low. Are you, do, do you feel me? Yes. You say in America. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I sense in the spirit that mm. this is a, an opportunity to teach, to understand, and to experience. We, Hallelujah. We talk time and time again about the value of understanding. And once we acknowledge that we've been miseducated, this is a period to have encounters with the Most High. Exactly. And what did you say? Have encounters with the Most High. When we acknowledge, when we acknowledge, yeah. all, of, all of us were deceived. Yes. All of us. Yeah. Never, all of us were lied to. Yes. All of us were born in lies. Yes. Once you acknowledge humility, yes. that's all it takes. Humility. Yeah. I've learned so much from you, Makaya, and you, Sister Sarah. Though I've been so called longer in this truth, but I love to go on your channel because I learned so much from you. <laughs> Never minimize who you are. That's because maybe I know a few Bantu words here yeah, and, and I know the Bible. That's all. Seriously. Yeah. Well, really. So, yeah, I'm done. I, I was just going to say that is the vision of the Bantu therapy that has even convicted us to work with Brother Messiah. That is the vision and the interest of my personal life. And really the mission of my channel is to create an opportunity for conversation, for dialogue, to, for, to, to edify one another in our walks, to create conversation. Hallelujah. Too long Hallelujah. operated in a system that has, has not fostered or- Exactly. Uh, had our best interest in heart in terms exactly. of our own spiritual growth and ascension. And exactly. The will doctrine is that we grow. The doctrines will differ mm -hmm. because we don't even have the whole freaking truth in the Bible. We yeah. don't. We can see the Bible differently. Yeah. So we must have this, the maturity to say, hey, brother, you may see something this way. You may see something this way. But I can still work with you. Yes. <sighs> yes. Let's read the last scripture and then we're done. You have work, right? Tomorrow. You, you were good. Nah, man. I have to respect you, man. Okay. Makai, I gotta, gotta respect you, homie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Second Corinthians. Chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 1. Chapter 12, verse 1. Yeah, Second Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 1 to verse 6. Okay. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Stop. I will come to visions and revelations of Yah. So he had multiple visions and revelations. Not one vision. It's possible to have visions and revelations. Hallelujah. You see, like our sister Carrie Ann, she has visions and revelations. I envy her spiritually. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, read. I know a man. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. Yah knows. 
such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Stop there. I know a man who 14 years ago, whether in his body, hey, this is witchcraft. Whether I'm in my body, this is his, what, is, what is he teleporting or something? Whether in my body or out of my body, I don't know. So, so there are some experiences you do. I, I, I don't know. You know, if you've never experienced these things, I, I know a man. He's talking about himself, by the way. I've had so many visions. Now, I don't know if I'm in my body or out of my body. What an experience. So he's so spiritual, he doesn't know whether he's spiritual or in his body. I'm like, man, what? The, man, these are the things we must... Man, it's not witchcraft. I call it Congo craft. It's Congo craft, my brothers and sisters. So he, he doesn't know. He's like, I mean, can you imagine? This man has visions. We are debating the name. <laughs> this man, we are debating the name. We're still debating the name. This man has experiences like this. My goodness, we are babes. Okay, verse, verse four. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. How he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. To utter. So, you know, you can be so spiritual that you know the secrets of the secrets of the secrets of the secrets that you cannot even utter. Because nobody will believe you. Imagine you, I said, you know, yesterday I was in heaven and I, and I was speaking to Isaiah. Isaiah was telling me about the, the next five presidents to, to come in America. But he told me, only reveal two of them. So when you're so close to the Most High, he shows you the secrets of the secrets. Look at Tiba Malonga. How did he see Congo in the Bible? I've read the Bible for years. I never saw Congo in the Bible. Ah, the, the, the day I saw it, I'm like, no, no. There are men and women who, who live in the bosom of the Father, man. Oh, yeah. they, know, they know the secret of the secrets. Mm -hmm. Why are we debating the name? Look at Pastor Melo, the third secret of Fatima. Who, 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 who even knew that something like that uh, ever existed? Do you know Pastor Melo's vision? In 1983, he saw Yisaya appearing to him. And then Yisaya transformed into Simon Toko. I mean, how are you going to explain it to people? What? what? Mm. Mm. <laughs> so Yisaya transformed to Simon Toko. And then Yisaya took him to Israel, Northeast Africa. And he saw the events that was happening. He saw the, the Beatitudes. He saw the crucifixion. He saw black. He saw bunch of people. Then he came back in his body. Yesaya appeared to him and transformed into Simon Tok. <laughs> Go, which Bible school will teach you that? Oh, Jesus appeared and, and transformed into Simon Toko in the Greek and the Hebrew. Simon Toko, no. <laughs> yeah. So when we talk about these things, these are not things that, that, that I, man, some people are afraid of these things. They are secrets of secrets of secrets. We are debating the name, but there are people who experience such things. You must envy these things, my brothers and sisters. Mm. And check how humble Pastor Melo is. If it was me, man, I'll have a best Sunday by now. Hey, to be in, holler at me, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's possible to have all this grace and still be humble. Mm -hmm. I know a man, visions and revelations. When last did you have a vision or revelation? Or maybe just saw demons, the demons. No, when last did you see angels? When last did you have experiences where you, you the prophetic, you hear secrets? We have to mature. The Most High wants to give us these things. And the Bible says, if you read, I think, 1 Corinthians 2, it says, the Spirit searches the deep things of Yah. In these last days, we need, we need to know the deep things of Yah. And I stopped there. To be continued. Hallelujah. Kembo, Kembo. Come on, let's, let's, let's be mature. Let's be mature. I stopped it because I'm so hungry and it's my time for breakfast. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll say in Geta, that Tanzambi, we say thank you to Asaki Jila Matondo. Forgive us of being spiritual babies. Father, we are debating the name. 
when we have children in pedophile rings. We've never prayed for those children to be set free. We're debating their name when revelations are being revealed to a high degree. We're debating the name when we have things like the Bantu therapy. We're debating the name when you're, you're not even in those debates, Father. Oh, Tata, help us not to be distracted in these last days. Thank you for Sister Sarah, as her deepest desire to, is to experience you in a higher dimension. Increase her. Thank you for Brother Makaya. Promote him at work. Hallelujah. Make him a reference wherever he goes. Hallelujah. Make him a reference. When he walks in his workplace, people must know that no, there was a godly man who manifested in, in this environment. Thank you for Sister Sarah and Brother Makaya. And bless the families in the mighty name of Yesaya Congo. In Geta. In Geta, in Geta, in Geta. <sighs> I'm done. And so it is. <laughs> Bye, family. <laughs>